<laughs> Hello, folks. I'm Grimwit from Natchevil.com, and this is Natchean News. We're still working on the current Let's Play, Shante, Claws of the Kimon. I'm taking some time to spruce up the graphics a little, you may have noticed. On Friday, we saw the return of Alejacon during Jet and Grimm's Godzilla movie night, after what feels like years. That was pretty awesome. Speaking of which, we do a secret movie night for Natchians every Friday night. Link in the doodly-doo if you want to join. Grimm, why wasn't there a comic last week? Er, well, uh... Recently, I've been trying to work out what it is about comics that I adore so much and where my passions lie. The result of my inward looking is... storytelling. To me, Whirlsin has been 1,000 times more interesting than the Natch Evil comic, so I just let it slide. In my quest to do nothing useful yet get paid, I've seen that one must truly hold passion in their art, and people will instinctively see that. I apologize about the comic, and plan on ending this Finding Gygax story arc soon, so that we can get back to... Saffron the Serial Killer Story, which, as we all know, is where the real fun is. This episode, our fine feline fellow artist Evil Seedlet is doing a voice. Sit back and put on some headphones as we switch to the third episode of Whirlsin Gate. Whirlsin Gate, Episode 3, A Pleasant Bus Ride by Mike Rojas. Special guest voice by Evil Seedlet. February 1921. Corner of Faustina and Ravenlov. The morning resembled a charcoal outline on a gray newsprint paper at the corner of St. Faustina and Ravenlov. As one of the few entrances to town, it greeted newcomers with the church and graveyard that bore St. Faustina's name. For religious purposes, the church had long been empty, but the rear entrance opened anyhow. Out of it stepped a young girl in a yellow dress. She pulled her cloche hat tightly over her bandage-wrapped head. A bloody smile wet the paper tape over her mouth. Hello, friends, she said, greeting the row of tombstones in the yard, her voice slightly muted by the thick mist. How are you this fine Sunday? The morning began as per normal weekend mornings. The stones kept silent as Melody skipped to the corner grave toting her green and yellow basket filled with the flowers she'd been tending in the church. They never did well outside. She proceeded to place the flowers at the face of each gravestone. This was something she'd done since childhood because no one was left in Whirlsend to care about the dead anymore. Jebediah, a cow-skull-faced man in a blue jacket, greeted Melody as he walked by. She knew he was headed to Dreamy's Drugstore and Soda Jerk downtown. He mentioned something about David Mitch Marshall fearing the bus, and Melody stood up straight. You avoid him, Mr. Jebediah. That man's a menace. She demanded. Oh, he's not bad once you get to know him, young miss, said the cow-skull-faced man in the blue jacket. He's just a bit scared, as all newcomers are. Plus, the bus has something of a bad reputation, what with it bringing folks into town and never out. Melody huffed at him, so Jebediah pretended to tip his hat and walked on, leaving the girl to sing to her graves. A drop of blood, a drop of sweat, a drop of tear on grass. A fellow falling under dirt and no one to come ask. My mother lied and told me I'd have feathers rain on me. Blood, sweat, and tears to quell my fears and stone my name to see. In stone my name to see. Melody heard the bus. The only bus in town. The one that whispered and had a strange woman driving it. That bus. It stopped in front of the graveyard for the first time that Melody had been living there. It stopped, and the doors at the front and rear, without mistake, opened with a hiss. This caused her to stand up straight and stare. 
Her eyes failed many times behind the bandages around her head, but not this time as the engine putt-putt-putted at the roadside. This bus, the one David Mitch Marshall was afraid of, stopped in front of Melody's church. Uh, hello? Melody greeted the thing. Yes, what is it? Having no answer, Melody stepped closer. She risked moving the gauze and paper tape aside to give her good eye a look-see. No one was on the bus aside from the passenger, a man who always sat or slumped or snoozed near the back, and, of course, the driver that people called Rexia, whose scraggly hair pulled over her entire face, head, and the blood stains leaking down the front of her shirt. Can I help you? Melody asked vainly. No one moved. No one spoke. Melody stepped closer against her better instincts. It was as if a great many voices were screaming at her across time and glass. No, they yelled. Don't go in there. But Melody had never been on the bus. She lived in Whirlson all her life, and she never rode the bus before. Melody took care of her dress did not snag on the way up the steep steps inside. Do I need fare? she asked. Rexia turned her head slightly. It wasn't clear if she was looking at Melody, or if she had been looking out the other window and just righted her gaze. Because from that point on, Rexia's hair, or head, or whatever it was, did not turn again. The doors shut, and, pulling her basket closer, Melody quietly walked to the seat opposite the passenger and sat. The young girl took this time to breathe in the burnt atmosphere of the bus. The seats were made of genuine leather and metal bars you could line a prison window with. Everything was painted white with a slight singe and ashen film growing stronger towards the back. The two seats at the very rear of the bus were missing, replaced instead with warped and melted metal and black suit shifting as the bus turned. If Melody stared too long in the back, she would hear people screaming, so she stopped doing that. The landscape of Whirlsend Gate slid around and behind them as the bus drove on. It turned left under Blue Crow Avenue, leaving the discarded shells of buildings behind. Old faded bricks held together by wood glue and the power of hell slunk past the windows, ringing like hollow buildings do when cloaked by the morning mist. The bus turned right on Vulture Pane, and Melody watched the Red House, a brothel and bar, pass by. That was another place Melody had never been before. Holy smokes, I'd never go in there, she said to no one in particular. The bus jerked left, dodging an oncoming car and dislodging Melody from her seat. Hey, watch it! The driver didn't hear her. As soon as the Model T passed, it faded before the mist could eat it. Another car pulled out of literally nowhere and aimed for the bus. As the driver swerved, the car succeeded in denting the wall on Melody's side, slamming her against the window. She saw the driver of the offending car before it sped away. He could only be described as raw meat. What the heck? Melody couldn't believe her eye. When the next two cars came, she saw that they too had no human behind the wheel, just meat. In fact, there was something wrong with all the cars, not just the drivers. Their wheels spun like pulpy feet. Their windshields were stretched like faded skin over a frame. Their headlights were bloodshot. Oh, crud. Those aren't cars. They're children. Child cars swarmed and punched the bus around until it got to the bridge over Toluca River. It reached the top of the arch, but then buckled slightly in the middle, right under Melody's feet. Cheese and crackers! She yelled. What happened? Melody quickly flung open a window to look. The bridge had been cut in half, rising up the curve and then suddenly ending. The bus stuck itself halfway over the crumbling cobble and bricks below. Where debris fell, where Toluca River should have been, was nothing. Not a riverbed, because that would be something. Rather, an empty chasm reaching down into blackness, into nothing. Uh, Rexia, we may have a problem. Before Melody could finish, the bus driver opened the front doors, stood up, and jumped out into darkness. Gah! Melody hopped out of her seat and dove to the front, hoping to catch Rexia's arm or help in some way. The girl screamed as she looked down and out the bus. There was no driver or road or anything below. Lady! 
Melody cried into the abyss. That was the moment when Melody realized if she hadn't gotten out from her seat, the bus would not have tilted forward. Her weight pulled the bus slowly over the half-bridge. Oh, crud. She grabbed one of the metal seat legs and tried to pull herself towards the rear. If I can climb up in time... But it was as if she were pulling the bus down faster. With a final push from a child car, the vehicle and everything inside tipped over the edge and plummeted into the inky bottom of the chasm. Melody fell flat on the windshield, nearly crushed as the unknown passenger followed her down in a slump. The glass cracked under their weight, despite the fact that the bus was falling too. Melody screamed. Darn you, bud! The hiss of the doors opening woke Melody up. They were parked across from the wordless hotel, where the benches were. Uh, what? She tried to rub her eyes from under the bandages. Was it a dream? The outside was still gray mist and faded brick buildings. Everything was as normal as Whirlsend would allow. What happened? Melody asked. Her only answer was Rexia, still in the driver's seat, pointing out the open door of the bus. Melody took her cue and stepped off. When the bus drove away, Melody saw that she was alive, standing on solid earth, and Jebediah was talking to David Mitch Marshall and Taxi Smith at Dreamy's drugstore and soda jerk. She turned to watch the bus fade into the morning mist and said, Well, that wasn't so bad. If you like Whirlsend, Gate, or Natchian News, hit like, share, subscribe, or whatever. There's also a link in the doodly-doo if you're kind enough to donate to the cause. Every dollar will bring me that much closer to eating ramen for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This might explain my digestion problems. Today's noun was the children. Leave a comment suggesting your favorite person, place, or thing from this episode, and I will include it in the next episode, forming a chain of nouns. If you like to hear more of Evil Seedlet's voice, she has her own YouTube channel with random stuff and a few Minecraft Let's Plays. You can find that link in the description as well. Also, if you'd like to help out, want to do a guest voice, want to add your own story, just want to say hi, leave a comment as well. Or you can contact me through natchevil at gmail.com. Have nothing but fun, YouTubes. Have nothing but fun. A drop of blood, a drop of sweat, a drop of tear on grass. A fellow falling under dirt and no one to call mass. My mother lied and told me I'd have feathers rain on me. Blood the sweat and tears to quell my fears and stole my name to see. Yeah, don't use that one, it's the Pokemon theme.